Gronk guarantees he'll play the Bucks get Seattle in Germany. And we hear from the head coaches of the Sam Houston state Bearcats and the Arizona state Sun Devils following the Buccaneer selections of one player from each of their program over the NFL draft weekend. All of that right now on the locked on Bucks podcast. You are locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. <laughs> What's up, Bucks Nation? Welcome to the Locked On Bucks Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am David Harrison. My co-host, James Jarko, not here for today's episode, but you can find him covering your Buccaneers and writing for SB Nation's BucksNation.com and find my writing over at SportsIllustrated.com's BucksGameDay.com. When we aren't here, you can find us there or on Twitter at JR underscore Bucks, at Harrison 82 and at Locked on Bucks. Thanks again for making us your first listen or your first view every single day. You heard me right. Gronk guarantees that he will return in the 2022 NFL season if Julian Edelman comes back with him. That was what Gronk said over the draft weekend. Gronk guaranteeing basically at his, his draft party that he, he so aptly titled Gronk Beach uh, that he would come back for another year if Julian Edelman signed right then and there with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to play as well in the 2022 NFL season. Rob Gronkowski, always a guy known for wanting to have fun, thoroughly enjoying his offseason. Some people are speculating that Rob is coming back and that he basically just wants to have fun, wants to enjoy his offseason, and does not want to be contractually obligated to report for OTAs. I mean, hey, listen, it could be. With Rob Gronkowski, you basically never count anything out, but you also never take anything he says 100% with a grain of salt. Uh, that being said, you know, he did tell basically a barbershop full of people that he was probably going to sign. He was just going to make Tom Brady uh, sweat it out. I kind of lean that direction. And, you know, the longer he goes without kind of shutting down some of these rumors, the more and more I believe Gronk will indeed be coming back for the 2022 NFL season. Either way, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going ahead and making some per- some provisions or taking some provisions for the future, drafting Kate Otten out of Washington that most people think uh, had not been for some injuries and some COVID issues probably would have been an early second round or a second round prospect uh, instead following all the way to the Buccaneers during day three. So a potential steal for them. If they can go ahead and develop him, get Rob Gronkowski back for maybe this season, give him another year to grow into his NFL legs and then see where it goes from there. So uh, I I wish I could give you a better, a better grasp of what to take from Rob Gronkowski's behavior or actually even, you know, going back to Tom Brady and his whole situation, I kept saying, uh, you know, to James repeatedly, you know, on, on episodes that, you know, Tom, is he still going on sports interview talk shows? He's talking to Rich Eisen. He's doing all this other stuff. It does not seem like a guy who kind of wants to be out of the sports entertainment spotlight. But with Rob Gronkowski, you can't really measure with the same stick. You know what I mean? You kind of figure when Tom Brady retires, he'll kind of fade off into the background, uh, maybe do some TV 12 stuff and, and all that. But he's not going to be doing the whole sports, you know, Super Bowl radio circuit and all that stuff. Whereas Rob Gronkowski basically just enjoys being in the spotlight and entertaining people. Uh, so he's going to be in the spotlight. He's going to be in the news at the Nickelodeon uh, Awards or doing wrestling or challenging the rock or doing whatever he's doing uh, no matter what. So so even though Rob is is obviously very much still enjoying uh, being in the limelight of celebrity, uh, it, it's it's not something that you can really read into. But I just – my the, the feeling in my bones say that, that Rob Gronkowski will be back in 2022, hopefully – uh, I'm accurate there because obviously we would all enjoy seeing that unless you're an opponent of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And and specifically today, we're going to talk about the Seattle Seahawks who found out, uh, well, they probably knew ahead of time, but the rest of us found out that the Seattle Seahawks will be the team traveling to Munich, Germany uh, towards the middle of the season, week 10 to be exact, to face off against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Munich, Germany. That announced on Wednesday morning, uh, made official there by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the National Football League. That game will take place on November 13th, which is Sunday morning uh, of week 10 of the NFL season. The game will air at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, so an early morning for all of us here in the States that aren't there in Germany uh, covering the game. And for obviously for those of you in the States who are not going to travel to Germany to see the game, for those of you who are going to travel, Germany is a beautiful country. Highly, highly recommend. Maybe get there five days early, see some things, visit some places. Uh, try some food, drink some beer. It's it's a very uh, if you if you drink beer, it's a very good place to be. Very uh, very enter- very very welcoming country, I'll say uh, to foreigners. They'll treat you they'll treat you right over there. This game 
uh, when the Buccaneers host Seattle Seahawks will be the first NFL regular season game in Germany in league history. Uh, and the Bucs are also going to be looking to get their first overseas win in franchise history. Uh, three other matchups heading to London, including the New Orleans Saints, who will host a game in London as well this season. And uh, another game in Mexico, the 49ers and Cardinals playing that game. That'll be on pri- in prime time, actually, uh, that game coming from Mexico City. So the international schedule is out. Uh, so we know week 10 is going to be the Buccaneers game in Germany overseas. Typically, traditionally, that means the next week is the bye week. So maybe you can pencil in right now week 11 as the bye week. That's a pretty good bye week when you're talking about a 17 game, 18 week season, uh, week 11 bye week. Very nice if the NFL is hooking them up with what they traditionally get. So that's actually all good news for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. More good news here on the Locked on Bucks podcast. Coming up, you're going to hear from Sam Houston State head coach Casey Keeler as he joined me to talk about Buccaneers draft pick Zion McCollum, the cornerback. And we're also going to hear from Herm Edwards at the end of today's episode. Definitely not trying to bury Herm, but that conversation only about a six or seven minute conversation. So I uh, decided to slot that into segment three there. So you're definitely going to want to stick around to hear what Herm had to say about Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back Rashad White. More to come on today's episode. But first, we have to talk about our friends over at BlueNile.com, where you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. And with Mother's Day coming up, it's the perfect time to get to know Blue Nile. Whether she prefers a statement piece or everyday subtle elegance, BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom. Shop high-quality classic diamond earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, or gemstone pendant necklaces. Mark Mother's Day with something enduring. Classic diamond stud earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, birthstone pendants, and so much more on BlueNile.com. And the best part, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Shop stress-free with guaranteed free shipping and returns. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On listeners get $50 off a $500 purchase or more. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day, so use the code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Thanks for making Locked On Bucks podcast first listen or your first view every single day. Let's get right into my conversation with Sam Houston State Head Coach Casey Keeler. And then we'll hear from Arizona State head coach Herm Edwards after that. Join now on Locked on Bucks by the head football coach of the Sam Houston State Bearcats, KC Keeler. Coach, we appreciate you taking some time out for us here today. And of course, we're talking about Tampa Bay Buccaneers fifth round draft pick cornerback Zion McCollum. Uh, coach, what can you tell us about the athlete first and his abilities on the football field? Well, you know, we we had Zion and his and his twin brother at a camp. And um, you know, it's from Galveston Ball, a little school down on the coast. And boy, you know, just his length and his athleticism just really stood out. Uh, he was offered by Utah at the time and uh, was committed to Utah. Uh, and then over time, I think mom and mom realized that might be a little bit too far away. Mm-hmm. And so they decided to, uh, you know, come Sam Houston. He's a guy I always thought, you know, I'd love to get a red shirt year. But he started every game for us as a true freshman. You know, pretty yeah. tough uh, to, uh, to find a red shirt year for those guys. And then fortunately, we went through COVID. It's one of the few times you're ever going to hear fortunately with COVID. But uh, that was a situation where a guy like Zion could get that red shirt year that he really needed because he has such great length and athleticism. His body just needs to keep on filling out. And uh, I think, you know, when he went to the combine, it showed the tremendous athlete he is. Absolutely. And of course, we also want to talk to you about the young man himself uh, as well, the person. And we know, like you mentioned, his twin brother, Tristan, playing safety for you there as well. Uh, Tristan headed to the Houston Texans, if I believe, as an undrafted free agent. But what was it like coaching Zion, having kind of that family dynamic, that twin brother dynamic? And how do you think Zion is going to transition into the NFL locker room? Yeah, we have five sets of brothers on the team. And like this, we have another set of twins on the team who has a brother on the team. So kind of runs in our, our DNA, you know, who we are. Uh, but uh, and I think it was a tough choice uh, for for Zion and Tristan to figure out if they were going to go together someplace or if they were going to you know go apart. You know, and mm-hmm. I think you know, they, they, we had discussed it, and I said I do think there's some there's some benefits to, to you guys going separate directions. Uh, and and I'm so glad that that uh, Tristan's going to be down the road with our with our hometown Texans. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, we were doing a leadership development uh, program with a, a group called the Program. And um, 
you know, they asked a question about leadership. And mm -hmm. Zion took that and met Mike and got up there. And when he was done, David, I was thankful that I didn't go first because <laughs> he just killed it. I mean, here's a guy who's very comfortable in his own skin. Here's a guy who's not afraid to be a leader. Uh, you know, Roy Rays to do all the right things. I mean, one of the best human beings, football side, just one of the best mm -hmm. human beings I've ever been around. Uh, always about the team. Hey, you need to run down on kickoffs. I'm there. Hey, you need to be a punt returner. I'm there. Hey, you need to do whatever. I'm there. I'll give you a great story. We are just got done winning the national championship, and we played, you know, obviously in the spring. Mm -hmm. And then we come back for training camp, uh, which is going to be our second training camp in a calendar year going into the fall season. And I, I knew the kids were burnt out. I, right. I knew this was going to be a hard thing. And so we, we did some things where we cut down practice, and we, we got the kids on the field a little bit later. And I look out my window, my office overlooks the field, and it's 7 o'clock in the morning, and he's out there with one of our wide receivers working on drills. Practice starts at 8 o'clock, you know? <laughs> and I had to make a rule that you couldn't go on the field until it's like 7.45 because he just, you know, I just thought he was going to burn himself out. But that's who he is. Yeah. He's going to do everything possible to be the best player he can and also is the best person he can. He'll be great in the locker room, great in the community, um, he's, you know, he's a gem. He really is. That sounds great coach. And, and you mentioned he got starts with you as a freshman. And from, from what I read on the team website, the first true freshman, uh, in your program to have three interceptions since 1973. That's, that's quite a mark, uh, to be able to hit. What was it about that very first year? I mean, you mentioned the leadership being comfortable in your own skin. Did he, did he come into the college game that way? Or did he take a little bit of time to grow into that? Uh, I think it took a little time. Uh, you know, he played at a small high school. You know, Galveston Balls is a little small high school down there there on the coast. And so I think like, you know, that's what I always said. I wish he had a, a, a redshirt year because I, I knew that he needed maybe that extra year to kind of really take advantage of all the skills he had. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he came in as a true freshman and and it, he learned so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we taught him, you know, bump and run technique very quickly. And, and, you know, his length, he just kind of caught on and he just loved to come up and press guys. And so uh, he found a niche very quickly on a very good football team, mm -hmm. uh, a team that uh, I think finished maybe in the final four in the country that year. And uh, again, you know, was a, a, an immediate contributor. And I'm so glad he's going to Tampa Bay. You know, Nick Rapone was my defensive coordinator at Delaware. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Ross was a neighbor of mine uh, when, when he was uh, in, in the Philadelphia area. Um, I know Todd very well. I know Todd. Uh, I know Bruce. I mean, so I actually was on the sideline before their Texans game, uh, Tampa Bay game, you know, preseason. Right. And it's just such a great organization. That's why I told him, I said, you know, you're going to a place where there's going to be a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches. They can help you develop. And I think it's a place that he's going to flourish. Yeah, and, and Buccaneers special teams coordinator Keith Armstrong actually uh, on on Tuesday saying that Zion is going to get a chance to play uh, some gunner, and he's also going to chance to win the punt return job. Uh, so how do you think, knowing how quickly he can kind of adapt, how do you think he's going to do in getting those opportunities? Oh, he'll love that. I mean, he'll just love every opportunity he gets, and he he realizes he's he's moving into an established organization, uh, yeah. a team that's a, a year away from winning a Super Bowl, that you know he needs to find a way to contribute somehow, some way. Uh, and if that's on every single special team, that will be on every single special team. So, uh, again, you know, you're getting uh, just a great person in the community, great person in the locker room. And, you know, you, you can see what he did at the combine. I think his um, his better years are even in front of him, which sounds crazy, you know, being a you know, two time All-American for us. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, that's the kind of skill set he has that he can continue to get better and better and better. And he will work at it. Awesome, coach. And then there's a, there's a question I like to ask every coach I get to interview about these draft prospects after they've been selected. And I know you're a head coach, so you're 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 concerned about more than just like singular cornerback play. But is there a play or even maybe a game uh, that you can recall in Zion's career there with the Bearcats that you can kind of point out to to a Buccaneers fan who maybe doesn't know much about Zion coming into this process and say, go turn on that play or that game, and you will learn what you need to know about Zion McCall. You know, there's not because there's really just something. The, the thing I remember so much about Zion is just his energy on the field. Yeah. And he would just, after every play, I mean, he's getting the guys together, celebrating. There, there's a culture that, that has been developed here. And, you know, we won 21 games in, in, in the uh, one calendar year. Yeah. We won three conference championships and a national championship. That's really hard to do. Probably the greatest season in the history of college football. 
And, and he was the leader of all that. He was the guy who kind of was the glue. Um, and even when offensive guys made plays, you know, he was over there with our quarterback, Schmidt, give him a hug. I mean, he's just such a team guy. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really tough for me, for me to boil down one play that uh, just says, this is Zion McCollum because there's just so many in my brain. Yeah, just a great body of work. And, and obviously the media kind of took notice of that. Lance Zerline of NFL.com, one of the more uh, well-known evaluators in the media these days, had a late third, early fourth round grade on Zion, but the Bucks end up getting him in the fifth. So a lot of people, fans of media alike, are already praising the selection and Jason Light for getting a steal here. Uh, how do you see Zion fitting into the NFL scheme, though? I know he played a lot outside, uh, but he has some inside, some nickel experience, if I, if I, if I know correctly. Zerline says that maybe he sees him fitting into a little bit of a safety role, possibly in the NFL. Uh, you know, Todd, you kind of know some of what these coaches like to do. How much of a steal and how how versatile can Zion really be for the Buccaneers defense? Well, you just said it. It's his versatility. Mm-hmm. I mean, with his length and his speed and his just pure athleticism, he can play that boundary corner. He can go out and outside and play the field corner. He can play safety, he can play nickel. I mean, you know, I think it's really going to be like, an interesting challenge for the Bucks to figure out where is his skill set best going to be used in the schemes that they want to play with. So uh, it's unusual when you get a guy who's that versatile, but I think that's why he was such a steal. Uh, the other thing is I do, I don't think people understand. I, I think that, you know, when you look at his body of work in the fall, it, it wasn't as good as, as his body of work before. I think people were like, did he fall off a little bit? I mean, we just got them playing 22 games in 10 months. Right. I didn't have a single David. I didn't have a single player on my roster that played better in the fall than in the spring. I mean, I don't think anyone could imagine playing 22 games in a 10 month period and go through two training camps. And we did, and we saw the wear and tear as the season went on in the fall. So uh, I think I think Tampa got a steal. I I, I think that uh, people thought maybe his production fell off a little bit in the fall. If it fell off, it was because just an overuse. That's why right. why it fell off. But, uh, no, I think uh, he's a guy that's going to help the Bucks in a lot of different areas on special teams and, and a number of different spots on defense. And, again, he's a guy, as time goes on, he's going to be one of those great veterans in the locker room that's going to be, you know, the, the, the core of who Tampa Bay is. Yeah, and, and I think, Coach, in the FCS, safe to say that most general football fans that aren't FCS-specific fans probably know North Dakota State probably the best out of all the teams because guys like Carson Wentz and, and Trey Lance and how sexy the quarterback position obviously is uh but it was your program the bearcats that won the title in 2020 like you mentioned beating north dakota state and james madison on the way to that win um and your defense had to contain now nfl wide receiver christian watson who got drafted by the green bay packers now this is interesting because the packers and bucks have a little bit of a rivalry some history and a more recently renewed rivalry with Aaron Rodgers uh, and tom brady so the bucks and packers face each other this season what do you know about christian watson can you help us do a little pre-scouting for that matchup coming up this season and do you well, think the bucks should just throw zion out there on christian and say just don't let yeah, him do what he yeah, does they, they, and they, they know down. each other and then also go into the combine and go into the all-star games and all those kind of things and also mm-hmm. there, there's a mutual respect between you know I, we talk about north dakota state all the time in terms mm-hmm. of being the standard i mean in the last decade it's you know we're sixth in the country in wins Behind North Dakota State, Alabama, Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma, I'm sorry, Oklahoma, uh, Ohio State, Clemson, then it's us. So, so there's a great rivalry there with us in North Dakota State. Um, and what a tremendous player! I mean, I looked out there on the field. I didn't realize his length. Uh, I didn't realize his skill set yeah. uh, until you see him in person. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was a good. I I thought he would go earlier in the draft, mm-hmm. and I thought the the Green Bay Packers got a steal there. Uh, when they got him, I think it was in the second round. But uh, anyway, um, and there's some great football in FCS. There really is. And there's some hidden gems that people mm-hmm. are now just going to, you know, so I coached Joe Flacco. I mean, yep. who was obviously a first round pick and won a Super Bowl. You know, there's a number of guys who uh, who uh, might not have been in the spotlight um, in their, their college careers. But now when uh, they get an opportunity at, this, at the pro level, you'll, you'll see some uh, some amazing stuff. Absolutely. And coach, I was, I was actually literally going to ask you about it. You've had some successful players. You've had some multiple players. Zion's not the first NFL player that you've coached. You've had other players like Joe Flacco uh, also head to the NFL. Who should we be uh, be looking out for in the, in the 2022 season coming out potentially uh, in, in future drafts? Boy, yeah, you know, it's, we lost a ton of great ones, you know, this year. I mean, we, I think we lost 11 all Americans. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, kind of unusual to, to lose that many guys. We have a wide out coming back, Cody Crest, 
who's a Harvard transfer um, that uh, was one of those really key parts of us being, you know, in the top two or three in the country and scoring uh, last year, the last couple of years. So uh, I think I think Cody Crest is a guy that uh, he actually did pro day, did not get an agent, uh, just wanted to go through pro day. And I know everyone was really, really impressed with him. And uh, everything was very positive about uh, the possibilities of him being an NFL guy next year. So, uh, yeah, well, you know, this is my 10th draft choice. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I've had a ton of guys play in the league. You know, Mike Adams uh, just just retired a couple of years ago, uh, 16 years in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think two Pro Bowls, Super Bowl. Um, and, and I think it's the second most games ever in the NFL for, for a safety. So I've, I've been blessed to, to uh, coach a lot of really, really great players and great people. And I put Zion up there at the top with, with the, the best I've ever been around, you know, with that whole combination of personality uh, and ability and mm-hmm. work ethic, all those things, he, he's right there at the top. I would say, yeah, some good things going on there, Coach, at Sam Houston State with the Bearcats program yourself and all of FCS program. Really glad uh, you you can make time for us. We can shine a light on this program, make sure that people kind of know that, that these things are, are continuous. It's no longer a shock when an FCS player uh, makes the NFL. I think Joe Flacco actually maybe may, may have been the start of kind of that run. Sam Houston State Bearcats head coach Casey Keeler. Coach, we appreciate your time. We wish you all the lucky bounces that a team might need in the upcoming collegiate season. All right. Thanks, David. One more segment on today's episode brought to you today by betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline, where the game starts. Final segment here, the Locked On Bucks podcast on this Thursday episode. David Harrison going solo at D Harrison eighty two on Twitter. My co host James Jarko at J Yarko underscore Bucks. And now my conversation with Arizona State head coach Herm Edwards on new Buccaneers running back Rashad White and a little bit more on draft evaluations from a media standpoint, public standpoint, and organizational standpoint. Uh, Herm was unable to do video with me during this conversation. Unfortunately, he's on the recruiting trail, so you are going to only hear the audio if you're watching over on YouTube. But here now is my conversation with Arizona State head coach, Herm Edwards. Joining me now here on Locked on Bucks is the head football coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils, Herm Edwards. Uh, Coach, a little bit of phone tag, but I appreciate you taking some time out for me. Um, I know we only have a handful of minutes. We greatly appreciate you uh, speaking to us about new Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back Rashad White. So uh, let's get right down to it, really. Who are the Bucks getting with their third-round pick? Uh, Very versatile player. In in other words, um, can run inside, um, has enough speed to um, to make big plays once he can get outside on the perimeter, and a very very talented player as far as catching the football out of the backfield has really great hands. So you're getting a complete football player. Uh, does does a good job in in protection as far as picking up blitzes. Um, a really good uh, a route runner coming out of the backfield. And um, he has he he has great contact balance. You know he's always running forward, so you're getting you're getting a really good football player. And that's going to be music to the ears of Buccaneers fans. Uh, of course, some are saying the Bucks reached here taking a player on day two that many in the media had as a day three prospect. Coach, you bring a unique perspective that not everyone we interview this time of year has, having coached in the NFL, obviously in college, and then having sat in the analyst seat. So can you kind of help everyone outside here who kind of struggles with understanding the difference between a media projection evaluation and what happens during the NFL evaluation process and how an NFL team will obviously have a day two grade or, or target a guy on day two when everybody else, the the Mel Kuypers, et cetera, of the world, have them in day three? Well, I think it's a, it, 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 that's what's great about America. Everybody's a fan and everybody's a coach and everybody's a scout, right? And everybody's a broadcaster. But at the end of the day, you go with the professionals that really do it for a living, uh, that are in and out of the buildings, that are, that are watching the player. And then, you know, I've been said this about the draft, and I've, I've been involved in a lot of them uh, as, as a head coach and as a position coach. Uh, came in the league, and there was a draft. There, was, there were 12 rounds when I came in. I took it down to seven. But basically, you know, it's always – I've always said this. The draft is in, 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 the, in the eye of the beholder. Right, and you 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 look at people a little bit different. Now, there's always a, a collection 
of maybe 50 players that if you threw them all up on the board, you know, you'd probably get it pretty close. But after that, it, it's really, you know, what are you looking for? What type of player are you looking for for your team? You know, he, he's coming to your team. You're not drafting for somebody else. You're actually drafting for your team. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, when you draft players, you feel like this guy will bring this to the team. You know, the draft is about really looking at the parts of your team, whether it's offense, defense, and special teams, and saying, if I draft this player, what role will he have when he comes here? And the role he has will help us win. And that's what the draft is about. It's, it's not about, you know, the media and, and, you know, the names that people might know. Think of all the players that were drafted um, that maybe the media didn't know a whole lot about. Uh, and all of a sudden, they were good players. You know, football players are, are, are looked at what they put on film, right? And when you watch it and you continue to watch it, you say, this guy would fit for us. He'd be a great fit for us. And, you know, that's, that's kind of what you do. You don't worry about You don't draft for 32 other teams. You draft for your team. Absolutely. I love the way you put that, Coach. Uh, I saw a clip of you speaking to, to a bunch of athletes, and you talked about the, the difference between uh, talent and production and, and whether or not production uh, meets talent and, and all those things. What do you think is going to equip Rashad White to be able to make sure uh, that his production lives up to his talent there with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, I think he understands the importance of, of that. You know, he came here out of J.C., and his whole, his whole mindset was, get himself in position so he would have an opportunity to play pro football. And that was one of our recruiting, uh, uh, you know, whatever you want to call pitches to him when he, when he coming out of J- JC was a look, we have a pro model here. Uh, we train, we practice, we teach all these things like professional football. And um, when he looked around, he kind of saw the blueprint of, of kind of how we did things and it fit what he wanted to do. And, you know, he was one of the guys that got drafted. We had four guys drafted. We had another six signed. So we got 10 guys off this last team that actually have signed contracts in the in National Football League. Yeah. Um, now, we talk about roles, and you talk about living up to the roles for a team. Leonard Fournette has obviously cemented himself as RB1 there yeah. uh, for the Buccaneers yeah. at this point. But RB2 appears to be up for grabs with Ronald Jones leaving for Kansas City. So, you know, you're not in the Buccaneers organization and, and, and all that, but kind of putting back on the NFL coaching hat. Um, how, you know, if, if Rashad was one of your rookies coming in uh, to this team, knowing how he is and how he plays, how comfortable would you be in maybe putting him that RB2 uh, spot coming into his rookie season? Well, I mean, you know, when you look at where they drafted him, obviously, you know, there were other backs sitting there. But when they, they watched his body of work, the thing that I realized is that, and I think Rashad as well, and they realized he fits what we want to do. You know, and, and, and you make the point, Fournette, you know, I had Fournette when he came out of high school and played in the Under Armour All-American game. He was on my team as a high school senior <laughs> before he went to college. So, so I have some history with him too, <laughs> you know. But uh, it's just amazing sometimes when you, you know, you go to a team and all of a sudden things just kind of fit. And you mentioned they need a guy uh, that can come out of the backfield, that can catch the ball, that when he gets on the perimeter, um, you know, he can make people miss. Um, and you're going to get that in this guy. I mean, he's. He's a really he's a he's a good football player, and that's what you that's what you want to do. You want to get good football players, and he he brings all those things to the table. He's a complete he's a complete bat. Absolutely, that's that's what we that's what we see here on the outside looking at uh, covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's why we're excited uh, about his addition, coach. And I know that he's going to get a chance to also get some reps at Gunner and and be able to uh, to make an impact on the team there uh, as well on special teams. I'm gonna tell you who's really going to be happy. You know who's really going to be happy? Who's that? Captain America, your quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> Captain America is going to be happy. <laughs> Trust me. He, he, he's going he's gonna to say, boy, this guy here, he's pretty good. <laughs> Absolutely. I can throw him the ball and all of a sudden, you know, he can catch it out of the backfield. I can throw him a swing pass and he can make a couple people miss and he's running down the field. You know, last time I checked, uh, that's kind of important. Absolutely. Absolutely, Coach. And you know, if Tom Brady's happy, everybody in Buccaneers land. Uh, is going to be. Yeah, that's what I say. Captain America. That's who Tom Brady is. He's Captain America. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's what I call him. I've been calling him forever. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, head coach Herm Edwards of the Arizona State Sun Devils, uh, my alma mater. So you know, you have a, have a special place in my heart, coach. And, and I was through the roof uh, to see a Sun Devil come thank to the Buccaneers, so I can cover him uh, close up and personal. Coach, thank you for your time, and, and definitely good luck this season. Okay, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. All right, guys. One more special shout out to Arizona State University and Sam Houston State's. Uh, as well, head coaches Herm Edwards and Casey Keeler for giving me a little bit of their time uh, to talk about some of these draft picks. Zion McCollum and Rashad White, two players. Uh, maybe a lot of people didn't know a whole lot about entering the draft weekend, but surely could bring some excitement to the Buccaneers roster in 2022 and then, hey, moving into the future. For now, that's going to do it for today. James and I will be back tomorrow to wrap up our conversation, our initial grades evaluation and analysis of this year's Buccaneers draft class. And we're going to thank you again for making Locked On Bucks podcast your first view or your first listen every single day. Now, please make your second view or listen the Locked On NFL podcast. The schedule may be dark, but the NFL never stops, and neither does Locked On NFL. Get inside and opinions from hosts, including Ross Jackson, Chris Carter, and Tony Wiggins, Big Wig, plus local Locked On NFL hosts repping all 32 squads. I was actually a guest host on this Wednesday's episode of Locked On NFL. So if you want to check Ross Jackson and I uh, talking NFL news and notes, you can head over there and check that out. There's no off season for real fans. So make sure you're subscribed to locked on NFL on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. We will be back. James and I, if you've got questions or topics in the meantime that you want to discuss, send them in to locked on bucks podcast, gmail.com or call in and be a part of the show by dialing 813-444-5841 for James Jarko. I'm David Harrison. Until we speak again, make sure you're checking out everything we're writing over at bucks nation dot com and at bucksgameday.com and find us on twitter at d harrison 82 at jrco underscore bucks and at locked on bucks if you're out and about please be safe be kind to one another wash your hands fire the cannons and thank you for joining us right here at locked on bucks